First question is from Gavin Brumbaugh. What are some ways or exercises to improve body coordination? I'm a competitor in still timber sports. Oh, that's dope. What a and cool this sport. skill is very important. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Well, nothing will... That's the, that's the uh, chainsaws, like speed stuff, stuff, right? Yeah, and then they climb up and, and they actually like chop. They have like chainsaw and chopping events too. I just no feel way. like... I want to go to one of these. Yeah. yeah I want to go to one of these. What a manly man competition. Yeah. Badass. I feel like you like them and arm wrestlers, right? Uh, I feel like this is right up Justin's alley. Oh, yeah, I, feel like you, I feel like this is what you would have done if you would have known that they existed when you were younger. Yeah, I had no idea. If it wasn't for... If we didn't get in his way, he by now might be a famous <laughs> Easily. still competitor. Yeah. So here's the thing. Nothing will improve your body's coordination, uh, specific coordination, like practicing the sport that you're trying to get good at. There's right. nothing, nothing will rival that. There's no exercise. There's no mobility movement. There's no nothing that'll make you better at whatever you're trying to get better at than mm -hmm. practicing that actual thing itself. So that's number one. <laughs> number two, generally we can put in this, these are, it can be very specific depending on this, the sport or whatever you're trying to get good at. But generally speaking, gross motor movements, big full body movements are going to be better at improving coordination than isolated movements. So now what do you, what do you think about this though? And I'm curious to mm, Justin's opinion on yeah. that. Like, I feel like mace bells would be sick for someone yeah, like this. Yeah, probably. Because well, was, a lot of the, what they're doing is they have to balance core stability. They're they're moving the, the chainsaw from one side to the other side of their body really quick. And I feel like that that body control with swinging and moving a weight around like that would be great for this oh, person. Oh, anything swinging. We're talking Indian clubs. We're talking like those, those iron bells. Um, uh, iron clubs, uh, you know, stuff like that. I think that these unconventional type of exercises where it, it requires a lot of high skill just to learn a lot of the moves because there's some basic moves you can learn, but you can really get, uh, you know, into the weeds when it comes to uh, different types of of movements that you can produce with with weight and i think that venturing into that direction um it, it requires a lot of concentration it requires a lot of body control yes. awareness you know and it's a whole nother skill that i've actually found it does translate into other like motor skills and especially like hand-eye coordination yeah the, now the areas that you might want to focus on uh, improving strength or stamina or stability. That here's an easy, and I'm not very familiar with this type of competition. I can picture what you do, but I've never trained anybody who's done this. But uh, here's a kind of a rule of thumb: what parts of your body tend to get beat up and fatigued the most? Right. So um, I would imagine in something like this, this is a guess, but I would imagine your hands uh, and your forearms probably take uh, a, yeah, a nasty beating. Grip, shoulders, and back. That's, I would think that's what I would think, right? So I would do mobility movements. Um, I would do strengthening movements, appropriate amounts, because if you, you can overtrain them yeah. for those parts of the body to improve your stamina and your strength, so that when you're doing what you're doing, your technique is always well, really especially good. being so dominant if you're right side is chopping and doing most of the work too to be able to offset that with well, other they do, drills. I think when they do at least I if I they go both sides. I've yeah, seen I've seen that yeah, before. Yeah, for speed you go both you but go not both with the chainsaw. Yeah. No, yeah. even with the chainsaw I think. They go with the Well, the chainsaw grip? well the, oh, I don't know if they switch the grip right. as much as they they switch like going up and down like I don't know. This is this is a cool question for me because I've never I know I'm like trying to think I've never over. trained somebody who does this and it would be really like of course being like doing this as long as we have it's it's always fun actually to try and figure something out like this. Well, like I would really like enjoy trying to write a program for someone like well, this. Well, here think about it this way. You guys have all worked um, and been around a lot of blue collar workers, mm -hmm. people who would do similar type stuff. I've def I've uh, I've worked <clears throat> with people who have Yeah, but so and that's where I think your advice is good cuz that basic like grip strength, shoulder, yeah. back strength like that all makes sense, and I don't disagree. I think that absolutely belongs. But the the fun part of this programming would be to me like what what Justin was alluding to, which is like these creative, like high technical, high skill type of swinging weight around and controlling that because that's what they have to move that axe and that the and the uh, mm -hmm. chainsaw around really quick with all their movements. Mm -hmm. And if you've got great control with a mace bell like that, and you've trained that. Okay, so I've got I've got all the events right here. I okay, just looked let me it hear them. So here's the first one. It's called the springboard. So the competitor uses two mm -hmm. springboards to ascend to the top of a nine foot pole and chop a firmly attached twelve inch diameter block. From so you the know top which one that is, right? That's where they yeah. chop it. They put the wood up, then they climb they up to it, then they chop on again. Top. Yeah, and then they chop like pieces of it off. Yes. Here's the other one. Uh, it's called the still stock saw. Competitors begin with both hands on the log. When the signal is given, the the sawers 
using identical chainsaws. But wait a second, go back to the first one. Let's talk about it for a second. Okay, so okay, what, okay. What, what I picture with that, with that, that's why the mace belt makes so much sense to me because yeah. he's got a balance on a board while he's chopping with his left and his right back and forth like that to be able to swing a heavy mace back and forth and stay stable and control. Yeah, and there's some cool stuff you can do with chopping movements specifically with the mace belt too to emulate that and also like even incorporate your legs and lunge and chop. And so, yeah, the mace belt, I, I would think would have have you know a bit of carry over there for sure mm, then they do uh one where they have both hands on a log when the signal is given they make two cuts uh, uh through identical logs and i don't know if that's done for speed um then there's an underhand mm -hmm. chop where they stand um on a 12 to 14 foot log at the signal they chop through the log that's yeah. this one right here i think isometrics would be a big thing to really focus on too especially with all that just like maintaining your control and grip but like Dude. having a really intensive grip uh, because controlling a chainsaw like that and these huge chainsaws yeah like, these i have seen massive. these competitions you you're gonna have to have incredible core stability incredible yeah. i mean and power yeah mm -hmm. that's why that's why that's why the mace makes so much sense to me because the the amount of core stability you have, to have while you're swinging it because you can get i mean you can slowly progress those bells to where you're swinging that i mean right. how much is that big one you swing out there yeah so the the real big ones like all oh, 45 pounds <clears throat> yeah yeah i'm actually getting a 55 pound like a somebody that uh you know i talk to every now and then he's like oh i want you to try this 55 pound bell like yeah oh my god bring it oh there you go there you go yep. yeah i'm looking up a, a the, what their workouts tend to look like right now to see what they what they tend to do yeah um because i'm very interested to see what that looks like these guys but these guys but you like, know their forearms God, those, are those, God, those split, chains, those split are stances. Chains. You know, you're going to want to train anti-rotation and, and rotational movements. You're going to want to train definite, like high emphasis on core stability, and uh, you know maybe add in some dexterity, like with uh, you know some unconventional tools for you know added uh, bits of difficulty for coordination. Mm -hmm. Maybe invite us to one of the shows so we can come. Watch. I, I want to watch. Yeah. yeah, I do. 